just to ask you the question, that rubber ducky piece was was real world, is that right? Or close That's to real, real world? It's yeah. real world, yeah. yeah. It's The rubber ducky you can buy, as you showed, you can buy them at what Hack5 has them, yeah. I think. Yeah. And but you can build your own. Either way, there you know you can do it. It's realistic, and it fails because she used a known exploit that was detected by the AV. That's realistic. If you use a known exploit, it's going to get detected by the AV. Now, one of the things that she might have done in this at this particular point in time is she might have gone ahead and tried to obscure the exploit and try to get it past the AV. She complained that she said, "Hey, I didn't have time to do this. You gave me like an hour to do." It. And she's right. She couldn't build an exploit in an hour. Well, one of the things that was also kind of interesting at this point is that notice that Elliot is trying to SSH into the system. That seemed kind of odd to me because if I were doing it, and, and most hackers will do this, is that they'll put in a reverse shell that will call back to him. So instead of him calling in, they have a reverse shell that'll call him and connect to him. I thought that was kind of unusual that they, they did it that way. So Elliot's got this problem now. He's got hours, just hours to be able to take down the prison system. And so he still hasn't figured out how to get inside the network. So he goes and visits Vera in the prison and he takes his phone with him. And he uses his phone to scan for all the Wi-Fi networks. So he's using his phone. And those of you who have used Aircrack are familiar with this kind of scanner. There's a number of Android and iPhone applications that'll do the same thing. And what you can see here is that he's scanning on Mon0. So that's the interface. And notice that he's pulling up, it says ESSIDs. These are really the BSSIDs. These are essentially the MAC addresses of all of the APs and the channel that they're on and their encryption. And of course, their power here. He sees, okay, he goes back to his phone. He sees, oh, damn, they're all WPA2. It'll take me days to be able to crack it. And that's that's accurate. You can crack WPA2s, but it's a time-consuming process. You can't do it in 30 seconds or three minutes. Unless you watch my video where I'll show you to do it in 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. With a GPU. You know, it's exactly right. It, it really depends. Depends how lucky you it are. It depends. Really, to be able to crack WPA2, basically what you're doing is you're trying to take a word list and match the word list to the password of the system. If somebody's used a very weak password, you can potentially crack it in a matter of seconds or minutes. I mean, if they've used you know a, a password that's the same as the ESSID, you might be able to do it in a matter of minutes. But Elliot looks at it and goes, realistically says, I can't do this. I can't do this in hours. I need to find another way into the system. So he's trying to figure this out. He's actually walking out of visiting Vera at the jail. And while he's walking out, he sees on his screen that somebody is connected to the internal network inside the jail. And it happens to be a police car. So this gives him the idea. If I can get inside of his system, then I'll be inside of the prison's network. So the question is, how does he get inside the squad car's laptop? And that's where we get to Bluetooth. Just before we go there, can I ask you about the WPA thing just quickly? So yep. uh, reality versus movies, which phone would you recommend? Do, is it Android? Android is going to be the easiest to do this kind of stuff. Or do you install Linux or something on a, on a phone? You can either install, you know, there's NetHunter that is basically Kali on a phone. Or you can just, there's applications you can just download both for the iPhone and for Android that'll do the scanning like in this picture that we just put up here. It doesn't tell us what this is, what the scanner it is, but there's a number of them. Just go to the iPhone store, go to the, the Google Play store and look for Wi-Fi scanners and there's a whole slew of them that'll do this. Yeah, so that's just showing you the networks available. It's not showing, it's not letting you crack them, is that right? Or there's a specific app that you would use on a phone to crack it all. I mean, it's going to take forever. So you're going to push that off to, uh, to, another, to a GPU or something, yeah? What you want to do is you want to capture the handshake Yep. All right. So he's just scanning for the networks. And then if you're using Kali, you want to go ahead and use Aero Dump. And Aero Dump will allow you to capture the handshake between the client and the AP. And then once you capture that handshake, inside that handshake is the hash of the password. And that's what you try to crack with. He realizes that's not realistic. He can't 
You can't do that. So he realizes that the police car has a dedicated cellular connection to the network inside the jail. And he sees that when he's walking out of the jail and he sees that that police car is connected inside that network. Immediately he says, oh, I have a path inside the network of the jail. The path is I have to get inside the laptop inside the police car. <laughs> That's more difficult than you might think, right? Maybe you do think it's difficult and it is difficult, right? So here's where, you know, things get a little sketchy here. He's using HCI config to scan for the Bluetooth connections. And I'll, let me just show you how that works. All right. So what I've done is I've just downloaded Blue Easy. It's out of the repository at um, uh, Cali. And what it does is has multiple tools in it for Bluetooth hacking, okay, and Bluetooth manipulation. What I've done is I've got actually an external Linux a Bluetooth adapter in the system. So once I have these tools embedded, uh, then I can go sudo, and then it's hc. This is what Elliot's doing in the show. HCI config is just a tool similar to IF config that'll pull up all of the Bluetooth connections. And there it is. It shows me that my Bluetooth adapter. And yours is probably going to say down when you start. So you have to start it and do that. You go sudo HCI config, just like with IP config, go up. And now you got it up and running. You can see here's the MAC address. Okay, let's go back to the what. Uh, did you say you've got a dedicated uh, Bluetooth adapter connected to your laptop? Yeah? I did. If you can give me the device name, I'll put a link below so people can go and buy that if they want. This one is actually uh, a Panda. You can buy them on Amazon or Egghead or any of the uh, uh, various electronic stores. So look for ones that you know, have Bluetooth adapt I mean, Bluetooth drivers for it. Some of the Windows ones won't work. Some of them will tell you they'll work in both. I've tried a number of them out, and usually the Windows ones simply won't work in Linux. So make sure you get a Linux uh, Bluetooth adapter. Uh, if you're running on a virtual machine like I am right now, of course, you have to go ahead and attach it. So you got to go up here. This is virtual box. Got to go up to USB and then make sure that, see, it says your Cambridge Silicon Radio. That's the chipset. It's actually, this is manufactured by um, Panda, I believe. You also want to make sure, even before you get to this part, is you want to go LS USB to make sure what's connected to your USB. And you see I've got, this is what's connected to my USB. And here's uh, my Cambridge Silicon Radio. Of course, Cambridge is a British firm. You see the LTD right there. And then let's go ahead and clear our screen. And so sudo HCI config, this Let's look what it tells us. It tells us it's on a USB bus. It's a primary type. The name, just like when you do IF config, then it gives a name to the adapter. And the name is HCI0. Yours might be HCI1. It might be HCI2. But usually it's going to be HCI0, just like your WLAN is usually WLAN0. Your Ethernet adapter is going to be ETH0. And then it gives you the address. This is the MAC address of the adapter. So this is where he, you see in the, I'll go back to what he was showing on the show. You can see right here, HCI config, HCI0 up. And he has two adapters. He's going to the second one and taking it up as well. And then he's got HCI config and he's pulling up the information just like what we've done here. What we want to do now is that within this group of Bluetooth tools, there's a tool called HCI tool. I'll just show you what it can do. Pull up the help screen. And so, of course, this is the help screen. That's what we're looking at right now. And it'll display the local devices, okay? Inquire any remote devices. It'll scan for remote devices. And this is the next step that Elliot does, is that he goes and heads and uses this tool to scan for Bluetooth devices in the area. And there's a number of other things. You can submit arbitrary HCI commands. You can do inquiries. Uh, but right now, we're going to kind of just do what Elliot did. And that's what he did is he went ahead and did HCI tool scan. And it begins to scan. And what it's doing is it's looking for other Bluetooth devices. It pulls up one device. And this is a, these are the speaker system in my office. Let's go ahead and turn on some other Bluetooth devices and see if we can uh, see them as well.